In this lesson, I'm going to be going over my camera recommendations. Now, before I get started, there's a couple things to keep in mind. One is, like I mentioned earlier, camera manufacturers are coming out with new models of cameras at all times. So by the time I launch this course and by the time that you're watching this video, there's probably going to be new models and new versions of all the cameras that I recommend. But typically these camera manufacturers all have like a certain line of camera and they're all very similar. So for example, you might have the basic entry level DSLR camera for Canon and they come out with a new version of that camera every three or four years. Whatever sort of model you have, just look and see if there's a newer version before you purchase and when you're looking at the specific models. The next thing is that you might be asking what camera brand is going to be best for you. And I honestly believe that any brand is going to have a great camera for video production for YouTube. There are some specific things that you need to consider and the, it's going to make some cameras better than others. Those things include the resolution option. So if you can shoot in 4K or just in regular 1080p in the future, this might be outdated and everyone is shooting 4K, but right now not everyone is. So some people might be shooting 8K in the future. Who knows where it's going to go? And the option similar to that usually comes with options for recording in slow motion. So if you're shooting sports, action, more creative films, you might want those options as well. Another thing is if it has a flip out screen that articulates and rotates towards the person in front of the camera. This is important for vlog style or talking head video if you're speaking to the camera directly. Autofocus, another big thing if you are doing uh, vlog style videos, especially if you don't have that rotating screen, but even so, it's a lot, it's really hard to see if you're perfectly in focus when you are doing sort of a vlog style video. It, and so having great autofocus is a great idea. Microphone inputs, uh, most cameras will have a microphone input so that you can plug in an external microphone that gets better audio but some cameras don't. Sometimes you need an adapter or even for like a phone, for example, not all, not all microphones will work plugging directly into the mic jack that is in this phone. So that's one thing to consider as well. Size and weight. So are you going to be traveling? Is it just going to be static in a studio? This is something to consider. And then the cost of lenses and accessories. So this is sort of another sort of thing about brands. So if you already have Canon a Canon camera and a bunch of Canon lenses, for example, and you're thinking about upgrading, it might not be worth it to switch over to Sony, for example, because you're going to have to repurchase the lenses that you, you want or you need for your video. So there's lots of things to consider with purchasing a camera. And at the end of the day, I truly believe any camera is going to be great. We're gonna be going over the budget sort of style of camera. We're gonna be moving up into more of a hobbyist, which is sort of a mid-range camera, and then more into the professional grade. So let's get started and jump right into, I'm gonna be using a BH Photo Video, which is the uh, store that I purchased my gear from. You can purchase this all from Amazon, all sorts of places. The very first camera I would recommend you looking at using is your smartphone. It, if you have a modern smartphone, it probably shoots great HD or even 4K quality video. You can do selfie mode so that you can see yourself, great for vlogging, and you can even plug in some types of external microphones to get better audio. If you wanna take it to the next level, if you're more at sort of a, stand, a desk setup and you're doing talking head videos or you're doing screencast videos and you want video as well, if you're doing live streaming, Using a webcam is a great option. So the webcams that I've used in the past include the Logitech C920 Pro camera. It's only 50 bucks now. Uh, I think I bought it uh, several years ago, five, 10 years ago, and it was 75, but it still shoots great high quality HD footage. And while you might be saying, well, I want a camera that can shoot 4K video, if you're doing webcam footage, uh, it, this all, this will also depend on if your computer can even record 4K video from a webcam, which not, not many can. And then also, if you are doing something like live streaming, can your internet speed handle 4K footage? So that's just something to consider. There is a 4K camera from Logitech 
that um, a lot of people do recommend the Logitech Brio webcam. So I would recommend either of these, the C920 or the Brio. So that's the webcam that I would recommend. Taking it a step up, I think having a mirrorless or a DSLR camera is your next level for improving your video quality. What does that mean? Well, a DSLR and mirrorless camera are cameras that have interchangeable lenses, meaning you can take the lens off, switch it for another lens, and that really allows you to be more creative with your footage. It also will have that more film-like aesthetic, which a lot of people like. It allows you to get those blurry backgrounds, that shallow depth of field. These are things that a lot of filmmakers are striving for and even just 10 years ago was really hard to do on a low budget, but now anybody with a DSLR or mirrorless camera can get that uh, with, with whatever they're shooting on. So the entry level Canon Rebel series is what I would recommend if you are just getting started out. The T7i is the sort of the lowest um, or the latest model of this Rebel series. Right now it's $800, so anything $800 or less I would consider sort of entry-level DSLR. Now, Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, they're all going to have similar cameras in this budget and they're all going to do very similar things. I'm gonna say this one last time so I don't start to annoy you, but brand doesn't matter. So you might be saying, well, Phil's recommending the Canon Rebel T7i, any of the brands, that have any sort of entry level DSLR camera is going to be great for you getting started out. And a lot of these cameras don't have a lot of extra bonus features. So uh, the, really the, the decision is up to you and finding a good deal. If you wanna take it sort of to the next level, the, Canon, the next level for Canons currently is the Canon 80D. So this series went from the 60D, the 70D, 80D, in the next year or so, I think a 90D is coming out. This camera has a little bit better autofocus, uh, but really the quality of the video is going to be very similar to that of the Rebel series. Uh, but this is a very popular camera for, for YouTubers. Now, another camera that I would recommend that a lot of YouTubers use, which is great for beginners, is the Panasonic G7. This is a 4K camera, and Panasonic is, is really great for video creators. So while I say brand doesn't matter, Panasonic has done a great job putting in a lot of features that video creators want in their cameras, and the G7 is a great starter camera uh, for you. Moving up sort of to another tier, Sony has released a relatively recent um, mirrorless camera, the Sony a7 III. So as you can see, the budget kind of jumped from like 1000 to over $2,000 for a camera. There's still cameras in between that are going to be great, but this is sort of one of the most popular cameras at this time uh, for video creators that want a full frame camera. I'm not gonna go into all these details because I actually have a course called the Video Production Bootcamp where we go over all the basics of video production if you're interested in. This class is more meant to just give you the recommendations, but basically a full frame camera has a bigger sensor and that bigger sensor will generally provide higher quality video, especially in low light situations. Uh, so with the, for example, the Canon Rebel camera or the ADD, this is a cropped sensor, meaning it's smaller. And so the quality is not going to be as high as something like the A7 III, which has a full frame sensor. This is a new camera, autofocus is generally pretty good. Across the board, most people will say Canon cameras have better autofocus. There's some people that complain about Sony uh, skin tones, but they're getting better. Um, but like I said before, any of these cameras is going to be great. So this is kind of a next step up. If you wanna even jump up a little bit further for Sony, the A7R 3 is a, another th extra thousand dollars or so, but it's going to have more features the sensor is gonna be a little bit better. Um, you're gonna get some more features in video as well. Bumping it up, we have the Canon 1DX. So this is, at this time, their sort of highest end uh, DSLR camera. You can see though, it's starting to get a lot bigger compared to these other cameras. Now it's hard to tell on the, on the computer, but 
this camera is pretty big, but some of my favorite YouTubers actually use this camera uh, to do to do vlogging, uh, which is pretty. It's pretty large and it's pretty expensive. If you want to take it to the next level, you kind of jump from what I've been showing you, the mirrorless DSLR style body cameras to a more professional cinema camera. One example is the, so the Canon C100 Mark II. This is the camera that I'm actually using right now. This is a bigger camera. It's a little bit more expensive than a basic DSLR, but you can see that it's actually cheaper than something like the Canon 1DX. This camera doesn't shoot 4K. There is a C200 version, uh, and there's even a C300, C500 version of this camera that are more expensive and have more options. But the C100 version that I'm using right now is great because it has the great Canon autofocus. It has all the inputs that you would want for, as a filmmaker. So this is probably more for a sort of an advanced video creator if you're doing more documentary or narrative style work. It's not for vlogging. Uh, it's great for talking head video where I'm set up in a studio and I just want a camera that's set up all the time ready for me to start recording. Uh, but this is sort of that next level up. And there are cameras like this from Sony. There are Panasonic cameras like this. Uh, and they're more that professional cinema style camera. So if you're curious about like what model what other camera models there are similar to the ones that i've mentioned just search for best nikon camera for youtubers best mirrorless camera for youtuber and you'll find a lot of recommendations online and if you have specific questions please feel free to ask um, but i am going to just tell you what i've experienced myself and i haven't used every single camera but hopefully this kind of gets you started with understanding what things you have to think about with cameras, what uh, features you like, and what features you need, and then really what your budget is. You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment, but at some point, spending more money isn't going to increase the quality of the video camera itself, and it's definitely not going to increase the quality of your YouTube video. Like I say, you can create a great YouTube video with what's in your pocket, your smartphone. So. Again, stop the analysis paralysis. Just if you are in the search for a new camera, purchase something, test it out. You can even rent it. A lot of camera shops have rentals. There's websites like borrowlenses.com that allow you to rent cameras and you can test it out for a week or two and see if you like it. Watch YouTube videos to see what other people are using and recommending. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a camera now and the longer you wait to purchase your camera, it just means that you're wasting time and you're not making videos when you could be making videos if you purchase that camera right now. All right, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.